Now, before we get started, we need to talk a bit about the syntax of writing PHP code, since syntax is what is going to allow for you to write PHP code without having to create too many errors. So in the last episode, we talked a bit about opening and closing tags when it came to writing PHP inside a document, like for example, your index.php file. And the important thing to know about here is that whenever you create these opening and closing tags, your PHP is going to be parsing this page and search for these opening and closing tags until it finds one, and then it's gonna see that PHP code inside those tags. We can now very easily just take our PHP code and embed it directly inside our HTML like I did on screen here. So you can just have the body tags, you can have, for example, a paragraph tag, and then right underneath it, you can just include some PHP code. So it is very important that anytime you want to create PHP code, you need to have these tags. So you need to memorize these tags since we have to use them constantly whenever we want to create any sort of PHP code. So when it comes to writing PHP code, we do also need to talk about ending off each statement with a semicolon, since semicolons is what is going to tell our code that this is a finished statement. So as you can see inside my code here, I have a very basic pair of PHP tags and a echo, which we haven't talked about yet. But essentially a echo is something we use in order to output things inside our browser. So if I want to output some text or a string, as we call it, then I can echo a string, which is wrapped in double quotes, and then end it off with a semicolon to tell it that, okay, so this is the end of the statement. Go ahead and echo this out inside our browser. But something you may not know is that the closing PHP tag actually automatically implies a semicolon, which means that if I were to take an example like this one, where we have two echoes that echoes out some code, then the last statement doesn't actually have a semicolon because that is actually implied by the closing PHP tag at the very bottom. And I just want to point something out here because even though technically we don't need to have a semicolon inside the last statement, it is something that I do recommend that you do every single time. It is also something most people do. And it's just for the simple reason that it doesn't hurt anything to put that last semicolon. And it also teaches you that every single time you create a statement, you have to put a semicolon because a lot of times one of the errors that people they type in my comments is when they forgot to put a semicolon or they forgot to close off a parentheses or a curly bracket or something. So teaching you the mindset of putting semicolons after each statement is something I highly recommend you do because you have to get into that mindset. But now let's talk about when we have a file that only has PHP inside of it because up until now we talked about this page, for example, the index.php file, but in some cases we do also have files that are purely PHP. The way we do it when we have this pure PHP file is you want to make sure you have the opening tag at the very top of the page every single time because otherwise your PHP is not going to be working. But when it comes to the closing tag, we actually want to omit it. We don't want to have a closing tag at the end. This is actually the recommended thing to do. So just like with the example you see here, we have this file that only has a PHP tag at the very top, but there's no closing tag at the bottom. It is for the simple reason that in some cases, if you were to close off the PHP tag at the very bottom, but then accidentally leave a empty line or a space or something, then things can go a little bit wrong. Having talked about that, let's talk about a more advanced example of embedding PHP inside HTML. In this example here, you can see that I have a pair of body tags. So we have some HTML and inside these body tags, I have a PHP statement. This is called a condition and conditions is something we'll talk more about in the future. So you don't really need to know what a condition is right now, but essentially I have a condition here where if something is true, then run the blocker code inside the curly brackets. And in between these curly brackets, I did just like before, I echo out or output some text inside the browser or a string as we call it. And as you can see, I actually included some HTML tags inside that string. So we have some HTML text, but with a paragraph tag wrapped around it. And this is something you can do whenever you want to create HTML inside a web page. You can actually echo it out using PHP so you can write HTML and content using PHP in this sort of way. Um, but this is not really the most optimal way to do things because you may notice a couple of things here. First of all, the text is completely orange and that's the typical color when it comes to writing a string inside PHP. And because of that, we run into some issues with the HTML not actually having any sort of syntax checking. We don't have any coloring of the HTML just like the body tags up and below. So writing HTML like this inside a string is something that is going to get quite messy and it's going to get confusing. And you don't really have any automated syntax checking because it's not seen as HTML by your editor is seen as a PHP string. So what you can do instead is you can split up your condition using the opening and closing PHP tags around the beginning of the statement and the closing of the statement. 
So on the next slide here, you're going to notice that the if statement is going to get moved up next to the opening PHP tag. And then I'm going to close it right after that line. And then the curly bracket at the bottom there is going to have a opening and a closing PHP tag as well. Because by doing that, we now allow for HTML to be written in between those curly brackets, but we can actually write it as HTML. And the editor is also going to see it as HTML and actually check it for syntax and that kind of thing and color it. So it looks really pretty. So doing it that way is really the optimal way to do it. I think when it comes to writing HTML. The last thing I want to talk a bit about here is writing comments inside your PHP. You have seen some of it already, but I just want to just sort of like go through it since there's a little bit more to it. Whenever you create PHP code, write comments because at some point you're gonna forget what the code does and you have to return to it and you have to go through the code and see what it does when you could just have created a comment early on to tell future you what exactly the code does. So creating comments is a very important thing. A comment is not gonna get outputted inside the browser. It is just there for you as the developer to see. So we have talked about creating a single line comment here using two forward slashes. And because this is a one line comment, we can't go down to the next line and continue writing, then it's going to see it as not a comment. Uh, but we can create multiple line comments by instead of using two forward slashes, we can use a forward slash and a multiplication symbol and then close it off again using multiplication forward slash because in this sort of way, we can now create multiple lines in between these two opening and closing tags when it comes to writing a comment. And just like that, you now know the basics of syntax when it comes to writing PHP. There is of course, you know, more advanced things we could go into, but I think this is a good beginning to understanding how to write PHP and not get any sort of basic errors in inside your browser whenever you try to create any sort of basic PHP code. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this little video and I'll see you in the next one.